what is up humans of the cardboard welcome back to just nuts guys today we've got more burst of destiny reveals uh we knew these are coming we still have like half the set to be revealed almost like 40 40 plus cards i think still to be revealed in the next week and a half or whatever so yeah uh we have a new drytron or sarctic fusion card and spell revealed i haven't i literally haven't read these at all but i saw the name is like has our sarctic and drytron in the name uh as well as we have a new like cool little archetype called ice jade it's only four cards i've read nothing from that either but uh yeah really really cool so we got six new cards let's get into this thing let's get moving okay so first we have our fusion card this is uh ursatron the celestial polar illumina ship this is a water machine fusion effect monster to level seven. So it still works with like the Earth's Arctic stuff because they do like the weird like reverse synchro stuff. Um, 2000 attack, 700 defense. Stats are not crazy. Um, this card will always be treated as an Earth's Arctic and Drytron card. See, I told you. I told you. Must be special summoned with Earth's Arctic Drytron. I believe that's the name of the spell card here. First effect reads, once per turn, if another effect monster is special summoned to your field, you can add one or Sarctic or Drytron monster from your deck to your hand. Okay. So once per turn, if you just summon anything else that's a Sarctic or Drytron, add another card from your deck to your hand. Okay. Easy. Simple. It's a plus. It doesn't plus on its own. You do have to be able to not only make this, but have other extenders outside of it. But once you do, you do start to like replenish and, and, and you know, get some pluses turn after turn. Uh, second effect, once per turn, you can target one of your banished Earth's Arctic or Drytron monsters and add it to your hand. Now that makes this a little better, right? Because you can like make him add a card back, use that card to summon, and then get another search with the first effect. So uh, I think all things considered, this is a pretty good card at just like plussing. Uh, unfortunately fusion summoning it tends to be just like a minus mechanic unless you're doing it in like a weird way that that gets you pluses i mean when you look at like shadals where all their stuff floats their fusions are adding back their their fusion spell cards um and and stuff like that um but i don't know i i think like this this card is just like pluses on pluses which is nice um i'm just not sure it's going to be worth we just have to say the, the fusion spell to see if it'll actually work okay for that fusion spell or sarctic drytron a normal spell you can only use this card's name the second effect once per turn the first effect says banish a big dipper and a drytron fafnir from your hand and or field both you have to banish both And if you do, special summon one Ursatron, the Celestial Polar Illumina ship, from your extra deck. If you control, uh, if you control Ursarctic Polari or Drytron Alpha Thuban, you can banish one of the above cards from your deck instead. If you would tribute a monster to activate an Ursarctic or Drytron monster's effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. Wow, uh, this one's an interesting one. You have to banish both Big Dipper and Fafnir, not just an Earth's Arctic card and a Dry Trunk card. It has to be exactly um, the field spells for each archetype. I believe Fafnir is the field spell. I know Big Dipper is the field spell for uh, Earth's Arctic. That's so weird. So you banish them both to then just some special summon the fusion straight out of the extra deck. If you already controlled Polari or Alpha Thuban, you can banish one of the above cards from your deck instead. Oof. Uh, the second effect is nice. I mean, it's just bonus resources. I mean, considering you're making the fusions that you can try to add something back and activate it, um, just being able to like save yourself a tribute, save yourself a material on field is nice for both archetypes because both archetypes like to, not like to, but have to tribute stuff on on field or in hand just to get their stuff uh going um 
Interesting. I, I think I'm going to leave this 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 little pairing of cards at interesting. I don't like they're they're great. Uh, I don't really see the synergy. Like the synergy is just not there for the archetypes outside of just the fact that these two cards like are trying to force them to work together. It's a cool idea. I just I think the archetypes are already so different. I'm I'm not sure how that works, right? Like. Ursarctics can only tribute, I think, high level water monsters. And dry trons can only tribute rituals and like other dry trons. So it's like really awkward. They don't pair together. They don't do, they don't work together like at all. I don't know. It's so, so weird. But I'm going to leave it at that. Interesting. Okay. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on that though. Then we have our new archetype here. This is Ice Jade. Um, Yu Gi Oh! organization shout out to them, they do an amazing job. It says water girls appear that serve as generic water support, but the full depths of their strategy is unknown. Um, yeah, really cool. Only four cards. I love the designs, but let's just uh, let's just get into it. So, this is the first one. This is Acti of the Ice Jade. This is a level four water aqua effect monster. This is really cool. Um, the fact that they all look like there's three level no, two level fours and a level five, and then a spell. That's kind of cool, um, definitely because we got a couple level fours. We just got like the um, Kragen cards revealed. Um, we already have Bahamut Toad, right? We were like sharks. Sharks already a really interesting archetype. Um, kind of more and more on the come up and, and this stuff will only help that. So level four water, aqua, a thousand attack, a thousand defense. You can only use both of its first effects uh, and second effects once per turn each. The first deck reads, if this card is normal or special summoned, you can send a water monster from hand to grave to draw one card. Okay. So it's kind of like a, a thorough blade like effect, but it's any water, which is nice. Um, there's a good amount of water stuff that does have like synergy and grave. So just dump something to grave. That's like totally fine being there and then add a card back or then draw a card for your trouble. Pretty good. Second effect, if a face-up water monster you control is destroyed by battle or card effect and this card's engraved, you can banish this card to special summon a nice jade monster from your hand or grave. Okay, that's a nice like extend extension like effect too. Um, later on, like I guess more like recovery card. It does rely on destruction, but I do like that uh, this just says destroyed generically. You can destroy it yourself. If a water monster has its own effect that destroys itself, uh, it will trigger her. Uh, the only other thing I don't like about this second effect, I could, I could, well, not don't like, but could complain about, is that you do have to have her and another Ice Jade set up. It's not just like she reborns herself. You have to have her and something else, either in hand or grave, to be able to, to extend from there. Um, not a bad card. I mean, like, it doesn't extend itself, so it's not really an extender. It's a mediocre starter. It's a one-for-one one with its summon effect, with some recovery. It's an interesting card, and maybe maybe the other cards will pair really nicely with it, or we'll get more support in the future, and, and then it'll make more sense. But for now, it's like an okay card to me. Um, Tanola, the Ice Jade, or of the Ice Jade. This is another level four water aqua, 1,000-1,001. And two effects are hard once per turn each. First effect says you can send one card from your hand to the graveyard, then target a water in your grave. Send this card from the field to the grave, and if you do special summon that target. Second effect of a face up water monster you control is a show by um, battle or card effect, and this card is in the graveyard. You can banish this card to special summon an ice jade from hand or grave. Okay, this one's a little more interesting to me. I mean, like, I don't know. You could say that like this one's not as good. It's, it's summon effect is like not that good. I'd rather be summoning a buzz saw in sharks or something. I'd rather be normal summoning um, swap frog, right? Not not using her, but interesting. This one's a little more interesting because I don't. It doesn't take. Um, hmm. It is just a reborn. Hmm. It's interesting, right? So you're gonna you have to send a card from your hand to the graveyard and target a water in grave. That is all cost, by the way. So you are discarding for cost, which is never the best. Then you send this card from field to grave, and you can do special summon that target. If she didn't send herself or didn't discard, she'd be so much better. Like if she just like was on the field, and she said send a card from hand to grave to target a water and reborn it, but didn't send herself. Like that's the problem. Is it's a two, it's a one for two. You're getting one card back, but you're sending two. 
Now she does have that same recovery effect, and I do like their recovery effects in Grave. Those are still nice, right? Anything gets, any water gets destroyed, and you could pretty much just bring back an Ice Jade. Um, I don't know. I think I think these two are just kind of like pretty heavily ner not nerfed, but like their effects are just not strong enough for 2021 so far for me. Last card here is Tremolot of the Ice Jade. This is a level five water aqua effect monster. 1500 attack, 1500 defense, two hard ones return effects. Again, the first effect says you can send this card from your hand to the grave to special summon a water monster from the hand. Second effect, if a water monster you control is destroyed by a battle or card effect, and this card is in uh, the grave, you can banish this card to special summon a nice jade monster from hand or grave. So kind of same things going on, but what I like here is this kind of just reminds me of this, but doesn't have to give up two cards necessarily. Now it is kind of like a two for one. You're using two cards just to get one monster out of the hand. It's a resource, it's already like a, you know, a ready resource for you, but it does help you extend. You just kind of send her from hand and then special a water from hand. Again, it's fine. I guess it makes sense because she's a level five. She doesn't really synergize with like the rank four stuff. Um, as well, so I guess it makes sense that her effect is in hand and not on field because uh, You know, she doesn't really do much on the field and then she has that same recovery effect, which is not bad at all I think they're fine. I think the monsters are all fine. I give them all a five. I think Maybe I'll give Acti a six but a two for one that gets punished for cost only extending from hand Yeah, they're generic but like you can't just be generic you got to be good too so all right last card we have here is ice jade cradle this is a normal spell card it reads as follows add from your deck to your hand one ice jade monster uh with a different name from the cards you control or in your graveyard okay <laughs> uh cool like a rotor for them uh also it doesn't look like it's once per turn at all which is definitely interesting um yeah it's it's fine um i mean that's cool especially if they like fully uh if they go in in like later sets and like really expand this new archetype a lot more i think it definitely needs a lot more expansion um it's just not ready yet definitely not ready yet they're cool and they might have a potential should they be surrounded by by more good cards but i think for now they're fine obviously having a card like a rota really helps with consistency and utility for the deck um, but I just don't think it, the payoff is quite there yet, but I love the designs It's only four cards and I think a lot of people are gonna love the designs and want to see more So if Konami goes out and, and, and makes more it, it'll It'll really help like flesh the whole archetype out and and give them a chance. So very very cool um, Just interesting stuff here. Let's check one more time just to make sure we don't have any other new stuff Oh, by the way Konami um, uh, canceled their contract with whoever Antoine Griezmann uh, is because apparently he said some like hateful stuff towards a type of people or something and they I don't know they, look like they just made a thing saying they don't want to work with them anymore and they're expecting like a uh, a statement from him or the, the team he plays for like to make them feel look less like shit because that sucks <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for us for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, uh, let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts on the new cards. Let me know which, if you think these are just too awkward like I do or not. And let me know what you think about these new water cards. Do you think there's still a good potential there? I think the fact that there's a Rota means any card that we get from them that's like actually good water support becomes really cool because now it's just like a searchable engine doesn't look like it's a hard one to return so you could open two of the search spell and search like two cards and maybe you have like a two card combo i don't know but it's cool so let me know in the comment section down below what you're thinking there thank you so much for watching as always subscribe if you want to keep up to date on all of these bursts of destiny reveals and other reveals down the line and off the cuff reviews and i'll see you in the next one goodbye